tide has uh, finally turned, then it'll be Black who will be winning that. So on a practical level, I would say grab the pawn. But that's because I like to play intuitively. I agree. What about you, Daniel? I oh, okay. agree, but with one caveat, the one thing I couldn't take my eyes off after Queen takes G7 is this possibility of Rook H to G8. And this sets a nasty little trap. You might say, what is Black doing? Just taking more pawns. And then whoop, there's Rook takes G2 check. And if King takes G2, you run into a very pretty discovery against White's Queen. Bishop H3 and the Queen is lost. So after Rook G8, White would have to find alternate arrangements for the queen, but the queen could really get tossed around here. If you play queen F6, there's maybe a rook G6. So maybe this is the kind of thing that Magnus was worried about because, um, I don't know, he's taking his time. He's not grabbing that pawn immediately. Perhaps you could take the pawn on H7 here and continue gobbling, just gobble the other pawn. But now, well, you've got to watch for that bishop H3 move we pointed out earlier. Maybe black will try to get the bishop over not to C5. No, my bishops don't move like that, but over to D5. So it, it's, it's a position that's virtually impossible for a human to evaluate. And when a position's impossible to evaluate, you know, in my experience, it generally means the evaluation is 0, 0.0. And I think that theory is proven here. As you see, the evil bar is just like, what are you talking about? This is as equal as it gets. But yeah, I would take, I would take on G7. <laughs> no, sorry. Yeah, I have, to, I have to say, I would also hasten, um, I would hasten to add about grabbing pawns i would grab one pawn but i perhaps wouldn't be grabby um grabby that's a, that's a word <laughs> um <laughs> and take on h7 because i'm actually i'm doing black's job for them you know the whole point of having rooks is to put them on open lines and by grabbing both the g pawn and h pawn then basically you're opening those lines and uh yeah improving the quality of the rooks so i would grab one and then not the other one. Right, but uh, yeah. Oh, Let's pat ourselves and on the it's back. on Yogi, the board. It. Yeah. And uh, here, prepare for that queen to be kicked around. Yeah. I, I would bet my house that Magnus would not fall for that trick. You know, that, that <laughs> lovely trick that you, you highlighted. Oh, I would as well. Maybe <laughs> okay. we'll both end up without homes. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, yeah, it's going to be interesting. So it, hang on. Let's be kind of concrete about this so if the rook comes and attacks the queen mm -hmm. let's take a vote should he capture on h7 my instinct was like no 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 don't do that but uh is, is that uh is it possible to be so greedy because well, in this day and age people just say hang on don't play by principles play by concrete calculation so can you do it rook hg8 queen takes pawn and then say i loved your idea by the way of playing bishop e6 and bishop d5 that was terrifying yeah there's a lot of possible bishop maneuvers now there is a good russian expression uh as as we examine rook hd8 that is suitable here which is having said a you have to say b and it obviously means that once you've engaged in something risky you know there's a sunk cost effect you might as well continue in the same line after rook g8 queen takes h7 the other move which worries me on White's behalf is bishop e6, uh, bishop d7 to g4. What does it accomplish? Well, it obviously threatens to take the knight using the pin on the g-file. Now, you might say, well, this is not a problem. The knight has the d4 square. But you can see the eval bar shooting all the way down. Why? Because now the queen gets tossed around further. But the problem isn't that the queen is attacked. It's that White suddenly loses the pawn on h2. That's so easy to forget about. And knight takes c6 check doesn't do anything. Black just recaptures with the pawn and then a beautiful mate to boot. After queen e4, bang, bang, and bang. The bishop on g4 blocks the king's escape. So this could get, I mean, white could fall off a cliff here in the span of two moves, Yovi. So that's a counter argument uh, against taking on h7. The argument for taking on h7 is that if you're already there, as I said, you might as well get your money's worth. Yeah. We have that saying too in, in the UK, in for the penny, in for the pound. Exactly. And uh, I, <laughs> I love it. Okay, so uh, yeah, so how do you 